I am Maddie Sloan and welcome to Snap Happy, the photography show. In this, our final episode of the series, Darren Leal concludes his Fraser Island adventure with some more great tips. Peter Eastway gives us some insight into his post-production workflow and we meet landscape guru Ian van der Waal and so much more. When Dale Sharp proposed to Carly Russell, this photograph he captured of their special moment went viral. Under the incredible display of the Northern Lights in Norway, Dale took this amazing photo under the pretense they were simply taking a selfie. We met up with this dynamic duo to find out more about their story. So this morning we rolled out of bed nice and early. We've come down here pre-dawn and we've made our way down from the car park down to the Fingal Causeway. The Causeway is just absolutely spectacular for photography. The aim of this morning, I think we're trying to get just a nice long exposure just to froth out the water and hopefully we can get some nice light when the sun comes up. The rock formations are like nowhere else probably in the world. Um, Ireland I think is the only other place that has a causeway like this with these basalt columns and they just look incredible for landscape photos and I think that's what you're looking for when you're doing landscape photography is you're trying to find unique locations to you know, create really dramatic photos. There was the water movement to the left of the scene, there was the causeway ex itself which was causing the leading line and then there was the sky which was impact as well. For me it's a really unique location, you've got the basalt columns and the water gushing through it's just it allows you be, to be creative when you're doing photography here. You have Cook Island in the background and the, the sky is just the icing on the cake so it's just the perfect place for landscape photography. Yeah. We like to capture it as much as we can in camera and that's why we like using uh, Nizzy filters. I mean using a graduated filter and being able to balance the exposure you can see the results straight away. I think we originally wanted to use the six stop try and get some like a long exposure to sort of flatten out that water but I think we actually quite like the the bit of textured water movement. I think it actually worked really quite well didn't it? It ended up just being um, half a second yeah. when we were shooting just so that we could see the cascade and yeah it worked out perfectly. Yeah. It's been great working together because there's some advantages to having a different person's opinion. I think it drives both of us to be more creative. There's a little bit of healthy competition between us Dale likes to think that he's the better photographer, I but am, I am <laughs> no, we all know it's me. <laughs> so, DK Photography, what is it all about? It's about shooting landscapes, enjoying it together, and also we run workshops that are international. Yeah, we do a lot of workshops overseas. We absolutely love it. We have a really big passion for teaching others. So how did you guys begin working together? We, we met online dating, which isn't really cool. We don't like to remind people of that. <laughs> uh, but we've, we've, uh, we both had a passion for landscape photography and uh, our love sort of just flourished from there, didn't it? Yeah, we actually went out shooting and we shot a sunset together. And it just Was that first there. date? Yeah, actually, I think it was. Yeah, it, yeah, it was. was date. <laughs> and tell us about that photo. Oh, the engagement photo, <laughs> yeah. He acts like it's nothing. Oh, that's just that one. <laughs> just the one that went viral. Well, Carly threw the ring in the bin. Um, oh, the first ring, yes. Yeah, the first ring. We were trying to fly between Iceland and the Faroe Islands, and as we went from one to the other, uh, we had to cut some weight down, and I had it hidden in a bag, and she threw it. Oh, I thought you did it on purpose, and I thought, no. oh, no, so he's proposed to you once, and then he, <laughs> and he said no. I don't think he would have asked the second time. So how time. did you get it back? Um, I saved up some money, and we went back the second time to Norway, and okay. we got this beautiful shot. The aurora was just perfect one night, wasn't it? And um, I always had in my mind, I wanted to do something that related to us and what we did. Yeah, beautiful. And yeah, it was perfect. Amazing. So you guys are Nissi ambassadors. How important are their filters in your photography? They're absolutely imperative for our photography. They help us with our um, basically on every single shoot that we go out on and as ambassadors we love the brand and the products that they have. So how are you incorporating it into your landscape shoots? It allows us to be quite creative with our workflow so you know being able to slow down time, being able to get really creative and moody shots. Nice and what is it about landscape photography that is so important to you and why do you love it? Uh, I think diversity, um, capturing moments that people don't get to see it's, it's definitely, it's encouraging others to get out there and see nature. So we, we just, we love all sort of uh, facets of uh, landscape photography, whether it be aurora, landscape, seascape, cityscapes, we love it all. There is just, it's just unlimited. And speaking of landscapes, you guys have been everywhere and to some amazing places. What are some top three, give me top three highlights. Ooh. That's a hard one. Iceland is one of my top. 
um, just because of the diversity of what you can shoot there. Um, a second would have to be Norway, purely because we were engaged under the Aurora, um, Northern Lights, uh, Massive, and what's your third would it be? I'd say Patagonia for me. Um, I absolutely love Patagonia because of the autumn colours you can shoot there. And Beautiful. Nice snowy mountain peaks, yeah. So you guys have just had a baby, little Mia, and tell us what's her middle name. Aurora. Aurora. Yeah, <laughs> we do so much work uh, under the Northern Lights. Um, we run workshops up there, so it's something that we're very, very passionate about. And um, I think it was just appropriate, wasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Just fits. Exactly. Just fits. So now that you are a family, how is it going to be working as one? Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, it's a little bit difficult at the moment with Bub being so little, but in the future we plan to take her on all of our trips. Workshops as well, in January we're already looking to take her overseas. Oh, yeah. We'll see how she handles minus 30 <laughs> degrees, so that's going to be interesting. She'll be alright. Yeah, she'll be Just fine. Just pop her in. <laughs> she'll be okay. Well, thank you so much guys, and don't go anywhere, stick around, because coming up on the show, they'll be giving us some handy tips and showing us what's in their kit. Hi, I'm Peter Eastway and one of the challenges landscape photographers have is keeping that sky under control. Often it's a little bit too light. If it is, one solution is to use a graduated neutral density filter, which is darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. So that darkens down the sky and solves a lot of our problems. Of course, if your horizon isn't completely straight or you've got trees in the middle, sometimes darkening them down isn't the right thing and so we need to go to post-production for the ultimate solution. Shooting in the middle of the day is not optimum because everything gets the same sort of lighting. What we really want to do is concentrate the viewer's attention on the skyline in the background. We can do this by darkening the sky and darkening the foreground. Lightroom has the graduated filter up here. If we click on the graduated filter, if we're going to darken the sky, click and drag down and you'll see the effect happening on the screen in front of you. We then come over to our adjustments, we just reduce the exposure down a little bit and that darkens that sky. Now, I get into trouble because sometimes I like to go really dark and moody and my friends say, hey, that doesn't look natural. So how much you darken it is totally up to you. When you're finished, press done. If the sky's looking good, what about that foreground? It's a little bit light as well. So we're going to use the same tool, the graduated filter and we're going to click and drag up this time and you can see where it's going. And now we're just going to darken down the exposure fractionally. And let's perhaps maybe increase a little bit of contrast and maybe just add a little bit of color. So we've got all sorts of things that we can do with that filter immediately. Press done. And now when we look at the image and we compare before and afterwards, you'll see that the image on the left, which, the, which is the original image, our eye is being drawn down to the bottom left. Whereas here, with our adjustment, our eye is being drawn more to the middle of the picture, which is exactly where our subject is and where we want our viewer to look. Using neutral density filters in the field is one option. Using post-production and the graduated filter is another. And remember, photography is all about capture and post-production. I'm Peter Eastway. Hi, I'm Dale. And I'm Carly, and we're from DK Photography. And this is what's in our kit. Oh, look, it's our <laughs> baby girl! Oh, she's so happy. But seriously, as much as I'd love to have my daughter with her shooting all the time, this is what's really in our kit. I use the Nikon D850, and I love this because it's robust. I love the weather ceiling when I'm traveling overseas in the Arctic in cold conditions. And what I really love is its dynamic range, uh, and it's high megapixels. For me, I prefer the Z7. Um, it's a little bit more lightweight and compact. In terms of filter holders, um, I love shooting with the 14 to 24, the wide angle, and I use the Nizzy S5 system. For me, I've got the V5 Galaxy system here, um, and I'm shooting mostly with the 16 to 35 mil lens. When it comes to filters, I suppose the one that I love the most is the 0.9 medium grad ND. And what I particularly love about this is when I do a lot of storm chasing, it does a really good job of balancing the overexposed sky with the uh, foreground. Um, for me, I prefer doing long exposures, so I have both the 6 and the 10 stop. Um, I like to create images that have streaky skies or silky smooth water. I also have the natural night filter in here, 
um, which we use mostly for cityscapes. And every photographer needs a really good sturdy tripod. Um, we travel to the Arctic a lot, so we use the Sarui tripods. I love this one because it's nice and sturdy and uh, it's weighted down, so on those windy days, this is perfect for me. For me, I prefer something that's a little easier to hike with. This one is nice and light, and you can just weigh it down with your camera bag. So we're DK Photography. And that's what's in our kit. So we've moved across to the west uh, beach of Fraser Island and I've got the group out exploring the uh, sand flats here. There's lots of crabs and other different subjects to shoot. I've got some crab pots here and we're going to put them up in a little creek and look at trying to catch some big mud crabs and they're a great subject to photograph. Um, we'll see what happens. Kingfisher Bay Resort is the island's premier eco-resort on the western beach and it's nestled within the um, World Heritage Surrounds right on the edge of the Great Sandy Strait and it's just the perfect little retreat for people visiting the island and some incredible resort activities around there but also a beautiful spot to view the sunset as it sets over the western beach there as well. We've got a lot of different environments here at Kingfisher Bay Resort and we're looking at the water holes and they're a natural attractant for birds. So we've got birds like swallows that are actually picking up mud at the moment. Some of the guys are trying to shoot the swallows on the wing, picking up water, which is a very difficult shoot to do. And we're trying to get some white-cheeked honey eaters sitting on bank sears and things like that. So a lot of it's difficult, but again, if you sit and be patient, you can get some really great results. Settings wise, we're looking at aperture priority. Um, again, keep it simple, you can use manual, you can use other settings like shutter priority too, but I find aperture priority, 400 ISO, f5.6 as a default starting point really helps you to get great results. And then after that, if the light gets lower, you can increase your ISO, maybe 800, even 1600 ISO. Really what you're trying to do is get a high shutter speed, at least a thousandth of a second to help you freeze a bird and get that really nice fine feather detail. While you're on Fraser Island, it's well worth a visit to Peter Myers Gallery. He's been taking photos of the island for over two decades and he's captured some really special moments. So you've been on the island for some time now. What brought you here and what's kept you here? I sort of studied ecology and biochemistry, right? And that's always been my main thing. I always liked teaching people about the environment. So that's how I got here and I started doing the tours for Kingfisher. I just sort of started taking photographs. I never intended to be a photographer. It just sort of worked out it that way. It just happened. So many places to photograph while you're here. What are your favourite spots? As far as favourite spots, I'd probably say the sand dunes, even though they present some of the most difficult obstacles to get to and sand just gets into your equipment and just destroys everything. Like so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so not, a, not to mention in your underwear and shoes. Everywhere, and everywhere, everywhere, you name it. Everywhere, yeah, yeah, everywhere. <laughs> so let's chat about some of your favourite all-time shots yep. um, and how you achieve them. Well, some of them are luck. Mm -hmm. Some of them are just, you know, your timing-wise, uh, it's just perfect timing. Others are persistent, like um, I have like uh, the birds hovering uh, around uh, grass tree flower spikes. It was just this little patch um, of grass trees, they were all flowered all at the same time, which is pretty unusual. Every nectar feeding bird in the world was coming down and they hover like, um, like hummingbirds. And uh, so I went back every morning, every afternoon for three weeks. Get so, the shot. To get the shot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much. The sand dunes are hard work because you've got to walk a fair way to get to them and then you can get there and it just doesn't happen. So you've spent hours to get to a place and then nothing really is worthwhile. And uh, so it's got to have a combination of clouds, light, all that sort of stuff. And sometimes it just doesn't work, you know. So my favourite shot is the wreck with the gorgeous stars. Yep. How did you achieve that? That one was just, uh, I just happened to be out on the island that night and it was low tide and it was a new moon. So I just went back and then I just sort of uh, used my head torch to light up the uh, the that shipwreck, shipwreck yep. and uh, I had to wait for the waves to go in and then recede uh, so that the, w the sand in front was wet so I knew there would be a reflection of the wreck. Beautiful. I mean I got pretty wet and the waves hitting me and stuff like that. So You didn't get swept out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well thanks so much for chatting with me today. I'm going to keep having a look around. No worries. I love going crabbing and, and eating mud crabs. We've caught a, a little mud crab. I was hoping to get something bigger for the group to shoot. But this little guy here, he's still going to be a bit of fun to photograph. So we'll go down and near the jetty at Kingfisher there and take some photos. I tell you now, if she bit me, I'd be screaming and crying at the same time. So, so I'm going to not let that happen. And when it gets really soft pastel-y colours, it's a really cool shot with Phil Flash. And like the Nautilus, what you do is you shoot the crab 
aiming to focus on the crab with the sun as a backdrop. This is a great opportunity to shoot a broad range of, um, of environments. Um, I have to say that my passion is for the wildlife, so the thing that we're doing now is we're shooting uh, a crab on the beach, uh, but we've also been photographing dingoes, eagles, and so uh, and that's really been my favourite uh, aspect of this week. Thanks for joining us here on beautiful Fraser Island. We finished the day shooting a mud crab. We're now off to the bar for a well-earned drink. I think what draws me to landscape photography is that uh, I spend my weeks fulfilling other people's briefs. Uh, landscape photography is where I can go out and do what I want to do without a brief, clear my head. It just gives me time to stop and, and, and take stock of everything that's happening in front of me and think about life and solve the world's problems, basically. I'm, I'm looking for a scene, I suppose, that is simple, that has a nice graphic element to it. What I'm trying to capture is the serenity of the place. We're here in St Kilda, there's traffic buzzing away, but it's actually quite serene behind us. There's a couple of small jetties and piers behind me. I know uh, they're very, very easy to photograph, but I want to try and photograph them in a slightly different way to what I have in the past anyway. All of the, the rules of composition are going through my head, you know, whether it be leading lines or rule of thirds or Fibonacci or, or anything really that I think is going to create a nice shot. It's probably a bit flat this morning. Um, normally, uh, I would like there to be a little bit more detail in the sky because with a long exposure, it's that detail in the sky that will, that will move, that will give us that texture. Um, I'm, I'm scared that today it might just flatten out a little bit, but we'll take it and see how we go. I might be able to bring some of that out with some contrast later. The technique that I use is, is a long exposure, so I slow everything down and it creates a sense of calm, of well-being. And, and that's really what I'm looking for, what I'm trying to extract out of the scene. My philosophy in the way that I work is still to get it right in camera and do minimal post-production. I generally convert to black and white. I use my colour channels in, uh, in the black and white process and that's where I really like the Fuji. It has really beautiful colours. So even though I'm producing black and white images, the colours are really important to me because I can tap into those colour channels to bring out contrast and make areas darker and lighter the frame just by, by uh, controlling the certain channels of colour. My first foray into Fuji cameras was with the X100 and what I really loved about that camera was that it was light, it was compact. I thought this is a great camera, I just wish I could change lenses on it. And then they brought the X-Pro2 out. So I invested in that kit and that became my travel kit of choice. And now when I travel I bring a couple of Fuji X-Pro2 bodies with me and just three lenses that cover pretty much everything that I need. And in a small camera bag I can fit that entire outfit and it weighs little more than a digital SLR with one lens on it. So I tend to take it with me everywhere. For travelling, I could not think of a better system. I have a library of images there that are memories that take me back to a certain time or place. But I also like that with photography, I can photograph something today and by the treatment, by converting it to black and white, it actually becomes timeless. It could have been taken at any point in time. So as landscape photographers, we love to travel the world. And one of our favourite places to shoot is here on the Gold Coast. We're here today at Surface Paradise and we've got this beautiful cityscape behind us. Conditions are quite moody today. Um, we've got a little bit of overcast, low cloud and a little bit of high cloud as well. We don't have as much light to work with at the moment, but due to it being a little bit moody and overcast, we're going to go for some nice long exposures to create some drama. We've also got that beautiful reflection that you can see happening there. I think a really important thing when you're doing photography is to take your time. When you go to locations, it's nice to stand there and look what the light's doing. Be patient with the light as well. Sometimes the best light can happen straight after sunset. It can happen just before. Uh, I tend to sit around and I'll keep shooting even into blue hour just to see what can happen. Sometimes you get those really rich, deeper colours and they can occur often you know, 15 to 20 minutes after sunset. And today I'm taking the circular polarizer off because in this shot we've got this beautiful reflection and creatively we don't want to actually remove that in the image so we want to take that polarizer off. So at the moment I'm using the medium grad filter from Nizzi and the way that these filters work for those who don't understand 
The filter is designed to actually balance the exposure of the overexposed sky with the foreground. So you get an even amount of light in both the top and the bottom of the actual frame. As you can see on the back of the LCD screen, as we bring that graduated filter down, it starts to balance that part of the sky here that's overexposed with the foreground so that they match each other and the, the reflection is going to look 10 times better. So I hope those tips were helpful. Yeah, I think we got a pretty good shot this afternoon. I mean, it was challenging, but we got there in the end. And you guys can find us on Facebook or Instagram. We're DK Photography. See you next time, guys. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on the show today. If you want to join the Snap Happy community, head on over to our website at snaphappytv.com. There you'll find exclusive content, competitions and special offers from all our partners. Thanks again for joining us on Snap Happy, the photography show.